Hello friends. So some people ask, why did I switch from an Ames 6000 watt inverter to an Ames 4000 watt inverter? And that's an excellent question. So let me tell you the story. Basically, I had the 6000 watt inverter for many, many, many years. Had excellent service out of it. Very pleased with it. But uh, I started having issues with the, the fan on the back. So the fan on the back wasn't working properly and therefore the inverter would overheat and then it would the temperature sensor would shut off the inverter. So I sent it in to Ames for repairs. There was a part that was needed that was on back order and it was going to take about two months for the part to come in from the uh, manufacturer. Well, I was impatient, didn't want to wait two months. So I worked out a uh, trade with them to trade the 6,000 watt inverter for a 4,000 watt inverter. So that's how we ended up with the 4,000 watt. So let me tell you about the difference in the two. So the 6,000 watt inverter was a 24 volt inverter. It was still a uh, 240 volt inverter, um, had split phase. Uh, you can still hook it to your, your power grid at the house, both, both of them, the 4,000 and 6,000. They're both 240 volt and you can hook them to your power grid at the house. They're both split phase. So they charge up both legs of the uh, breaker box in your house with a split phase between the two that allows it to run 240 volt uh, machines with no problems. So the, the 6,000 watt inverter has a 18,000 watt surge and the 4000 watt inverter has a 12,000 watt surge. So the main difference in the two inverters other than the 4000 and 6000 watts is really the uh, the 12 volts versus 24 volts. So the 4000 watt has a 12 volt battery bank and if you notice down here I rewired my battery bank here to work off of 12 volts instead of 24 volts. So I'm still very pleased with the 4,000 watt inverter. It still, you know, provides all of my needs for emergency home backup. Um, yeah, but but let me talk about the real difference between the two. If I was buying a new inverter today, what would I do? Okay. If I was buying a new inverter today, I would definitely buy the 6,000 watt 24 volt, or I would buy a 4,000 watt. 24 volt. But either way, I would buy 24 or 48 volts. So what's the difference in the 24 versus 12 volts? It's kind of like uh um it's kind of like you're drinking fluid from a uh, a drinking straw and that's the 12 volts versus drinking fluid through a water hose which is the 24 volts. So if you're obviously drinking through a uh, 24 a water hose with 24 volts, you can pull a whole lot more liquid through it than you can a 12 volt. So what does that really mean for the battery bank here? That means that if the inverter is pulling a large amount of power through, the inverter can handle it with no issues at all. The problem is really with your cabling. So if you can notice, I've upgraded a lot of my cabling to some of the heaviest cabling that I could get my hands on. And we would still have issues with uh, the, some of the cabling getting hot. So if you're running it at 12 volts, the cabling will start to get warm and can eventually get hot if you're running at 12 volts. But if you're running at 24 volts, the cabling can handle it without getting hot. So you can run more power through the same size cabling without getting hot. It's just like um, pulling more electricity through the water hose versus a drinking straw. Now, if you take that uh, concept and you extend that out, we could say, well, if we went, if we upgraded to a 48 volt battery bank, we could pull even more electricity through it with, the, with even less heating problems. So going back and looking at this, if I could do it all over again, I would be patient. I would have waited for the repair parts on the 6,000 watt 24 volt inverter and I would have stayed with 
the 24 volts and 6,000 watts. However, I'm still very, very pleased with the Ames products. They're heavy duty, they're reliable. Um, you know, it's uh, very refreshing to, to use a product that is reliable versus the cheap inverters I was getting from China that kept breaking every six months and had to be mailed back to China for repairs. I had nothing but issues with the, uh, the Chinese cheap inverters. However, with the Ames inverter, I've only had one issue in probably the past eight or nine years. So that's a great track record. So I hope this explains it to everyone. If you have any more questions, let me know.